Hi, I'm Rafe Blanford from All About Symbian. I'm here at Nokia World 2009. Now, I've been listening to the keynotes and in interviews this morning, and I want to go and have a look around the Experience Lounge. I haven't actually been in there yet, but uh, you're going to come in with me live and have a quick initial look round. Let's go. Here we are walking into the uh, main venue. I'm going to have to channel my inner Martin Brundle to do this uh, walkabout. So uh, let's go over here uh, and look behind us. We've got the sort of discovery area where there's roundtable discussions going on. So sort of all part of Nokia is wanting to uh, interact with the people, have a conversation and see the agenda. It's about where the uh, internet's going next, the Green Explorer and their maps, the maplet stuff that's been announced here around social location. It's one of the highlights on the service side. They really want to uh, integrate where you are with what you're doing, sort of linking the physical and the digital world. Behind us we've got the Mini, so that must be driving solutions. Yeah, this is the Nokia branded Mini that you get at every show. And this time it's Navtech and it's the optimised. There you can see a big sucker on the front of the window screen, probably with a, uh, N97 or some such device mounted on the dashboard running the latest version of Op Nokia Maps. Yes, that's the N97 Mini, in fact. We'll try and get a closer look at that in a little while. So uh, behind us we've got the uh, Discover area. Just trying to see what we've got going on here. Yeah, this is the Nokia Maps running on the screen there for example it's a sort of Nokia equivalent of Google Maps where you'll be able to do mashups you know uh, add stuff on top of Nokia Maps to make it interactive and that will apply both, both on the desktop and the mobile uh, on the right side right hand side of the this little thing here we've got the Facebook implementation this is basically the new thing where they're allowing you to do um, via a web runtime widget life casting so you fill in the details on your phone you get from the GPS and the camera and then it posts it directly onto Facebook you know this is the deep level of integration that Nokia is talking about with its services so let's move on to the next one don't think we really need to look at the breadsticks behind us so we'll see what's uh, our next one on here ah, over here this is an interesting one this is the N97 version 2 software and it's talking about all the big benefits here and uh, some of these are about sort of hardware optimization software optimization but it's also about how you can update it on the device itself, our SW update. We'll see if we can talk about that more later, but that's things like SIP coming in uh, and other good stuff in terms of an upgraded home screen widget, so they should basically be less rubbish when you switch between online and offline modes. Okay, so we're over to the organized area here, and this is kind of some of the business solutions. Got Cisco down there with their PBX boxes, also the uh, Nokia booklet, rather giving away the fact that uh, Nokia regards the booklet as something of an enterprise device as well as consumers. You can imagine people who want an entire Nokia uh, device portfolio, easier for IT management, they'll be able to get the booklet. Had hands on with that earlier, and if you have a closer look at it, you can see it's made from an aluminium body, it's a uni body, so it's a really solid piece of hardware. I was really impressed when I picked this up. Up and you know, if you pick it up, it's you know one one hand, really easy, not really as heavy as people think, and quite thin there. It's got the HDMI port. It's also got the integrated 3G, and that's with a Nokia antenna, so it's typically going to have much better reception. Your standard netbook. It's also uh, the GPS with the Ovi Maps integration. Uh, and if you look on the top, there's the Nokia booklet 3G, and I think that's rather a nice touch. It's very Apple-like. In fact, this whole booklet really looks like an Apple product in many ways. That's kind of a mixture between the Sony Veo style and the Apple style. I think Nokia's done a really smart thing there. They focused on the premium design and that looks really nice because that's really what needs to set a netbook apart because otherwise it's just Windows 7 running on a netbook and we've seen hundreds of those. And talking of Microsoft and Windows Mobile, we've got the Microsoft solution here and this is all about getting uh, Microsoft Enterprise productivity software onto your phone. And it's not just about Office on uh, the S60 Symbian platform, it's also about uh, designing kind of the next generation of productivity solutions. Everyone's talked about Office, that's the boring bit, it's about the end-to-end -end stuff in the enterprise chain, device management, and then whatever comes next, and that's the collaborative tools through things like Microsoft SharePoint. Uh, so let's move on to the next area, and uh, oh, we've got the N900 down here, along with the new uh, headsets. So there's a whole bunch of new Bluetooth headsets, which of course no one's paying any attention to whatsoever because there's loads of shiny devices going on. Uh, but yeah, some nice stuff there. There's a particular style that I like, which is kind of over the air, just a single band, nice and simple. It's going to retail at a pretty reasonable price. Uh, more details on that later. Also worth interesting here is the Nokia Internet st Stick. This is the uh, second generation of their... Uh, their dongle and Nokia keeps quite quiet about these but I found that uh, these when, when actually trying these out they have very good reception typically better than some of the ones from the Far East and again it's Nokia's experience in designing antennas that come in so you know nice little accessory there especially if you're an international traveler and you swap between sims frequently rather than being locked to your own country's 
SIM, you can get something like that, and Nokia set it up, so basically all you need to do is put in the SIM and it'll do all the access point stuff and APNs for you, because it's set up for that kind of usage. Okay, so next on, I've got the Ovi Suite there, just going past, have a quick look at that. That's, you know, Nokia's uh, new way of doing everything on uh, Ovi. It's going to be the desktop suite that sort of uh, takes over from PC suite. So, yeah, good stuff there. I guess we'll go around the other side of this table because uh, there's some good stuff here. Uh, look, that's Nokia Live Tools. No one no one's in the Western world seems to be very interested in this, but this is critical in the emerging markets. Basically a way to get things like weather information and market critical data via SMS. And this is part of Nokia's service portfolio. And you might yawn about this, but this is the sort of thing that could be on millions of handsets out in places like India. And it's where Nokia only makes small transactional profit from this, but you know, the, the, the scale of it basically. Here you can see interesting the TV out being used to demonstrate Psylocke World Traveller. Psylocke, a well-known developer in the Symbian world, they've done some great stuff there. And uh, the Psylocke World Traveller particularly good. They've just introduced incidentally their flight uh, software. It's about 20 euros a year and you can get live flight information. That'll be competing with Worldmate, which as we all know is one of the best ever selling mobile applications running on multiple platforms. So Psylocke's definitely looking to compete there. Uh, what, what have we got over here? Uh, it's the Explore and Share. This is more of the Ovi stuff. Ovi at retail. This is actually a really interesting thing that Nokia are doing. They're putting it inside sort of phone shops where it'll be easier to understand the Ovi services, the accessories you can get. Basically, one of the problems, of course, with all this new service economy is that people don't actually know about them and you need to educate the consumers. And that's what that's about. Smart screens inside retail shops. So you walk into car phone warehouse, you'll actually be able to buy a subscription to things like Nokia Maps or buy an Engage voucher. And that's really, really smart because I think that's how you sell the services outside of the sort of operated channel even or even within the operated channel because then the operators don't have to train up people so much because it can all be done through interactive touchscreen. Screening through the gap here, okay, this is a great example of uh, Nokia's global scope, you know, Ch Chinese handwriting recognition and calculator. You know, people want stuff in their local language uh, and it's often forgotten about. And you can see it going on on the N97 down there. People are putting it in with the stylus. That's why you want a stylus on your phone, folks, because you can implement those kind of languages. I think it's the Sibelic, lang Sib Sibelic languages, which are all character-based. You can't put it on the keyboard. So that's about expanding the range. So we're getting some funny looks as we go around here. MySpace and Gravity are like, we've got to look at Gravity. You know, everyone's favorite Twitter application. And that's uh, uh, developed by Jean Oli, based in Germany. He's a one-man band developer. Great example of uh, how a software developer can become really successful on the platform through doing a really innovative and well thought out application. Really, it's the usability that comes in there. And I'm guessing the MySpace bit of the demo is the fact that uh, Jean Oli is actually uh, increasing it to be not just about Twitter, he's also doing it for Facebook and MySpace feeds as well. So